Hi everyone, welcome to LBCC. I'm Abby Griewatz. I'm the coordinator of the First Resort here at Lynn Benton Community College. Uh, the First Resort is a student support center where we guide new students through the orientation and registration processes. Um, we answer questions and we work with students to problem solve any issues that come up during their time at LBCC. I'm really excited to be here with you virtually today. I'm glad to be able to share some important information um, about LBCC, about getting started as a new student. Um, and before we jump into things, I'm going to start off with a recommendation. Um, something that we miss out on by not being able to do a face-to-face -face orientation is the ability to ask questions and get them answered in real time. Um, I really want to make sure that you get all of your questions answered. So please take a moment right now to grab a pen and paper uh, so you can take notes and jot down the questions that come up for you during this video. And after the video, uh, please send your questions to us at the first resort and we'll give you our contact info. Um, and we'll make sure that you get the answers that you need. So right now, I'm going to give you a moment to grab your pen and paper, and I will work on sharing my screen with you so that you can see some slides that we've put together um, that will guide us through this video. Okay, is everybody ready to take some notes? Welcome again to Lynn Benton Community College. So as I mentioned, I work at the first resort here at LBCC. Uh, during the spring 2020 term, we're going to be remotely open. So we'll be available via email, via Google Chat, and Zoom, uh, which is sort of a video chat, uh, video meeting platform where you can actually see a person face-to-face -face and talk in real time. Our email address is listed here. It's firstresort at lynnbenton.edu. Uh, you can also visit us on our webpage on the LBCC uh, website. You can just search for First Resort uh, directly from the homepage, or you can go right to this uh, URL that's listed here. Um, and again, my name is Abby. I'm the coordinator. Uh, you can email me as well anytime. So we're really glad you're here. We're excited to get to know you. This here is Rocky, the Roadrunner. He is our mascot. So for your new student session, um, you've already met with an enrollment expert over the phone uh, where you talked about your major, um, your placement, and some different class options. Um, and hopefully you've already gotten registered for those spring term classes. So in this video, you're going to learn a little bit more about LBCC's degree options. You'll find out more about how credits work and you'll start to consider your goals for your first term at LBCC. So after this video, you can contact the First Resort with your questions. Um, spring term begins on Monday, April 6th, so you've got some time to ask those questions and get things figured out uh, before classes begin. So starting college, earning a degree or certificate, that's probably the reason that um, most new students uh, start out at LBCC. We've got some different options for earning a degree or certificate. So we have a few different options uh, in the degree realm for earning a two-year, what's typically known as a two-year um, degree. So one of those is the Associate of Applied Science, the AAS. This is a career technical degree. So Things like um, automotive technology, culinary arts, visual communications. Um, these are programs that lead directly to um, some sort of career um, at the end. And these are also not transferable. So if you think that you may want to transfer to a four year university after you're finished with your degree here at LBCC, you may want to consider one of the other degree options that are listed here. So one of those would be the Associate of Science, um, and this is set up really well to transfer to Oregon State University, OSU, which is in Corvallis. Um, a lot of LB students transfer to OSU. Uh, the Associate of Science includes an area of emphasis. So this is basically your major um, examples like uh, chemistry or business or music. Um, and Again, this transfers really well to OSU, so you're set up well for that uh, with the Associate of Science. 
If you think you may want to transfer to another Oregon University or even an out of state university, you may want to go for the Associate of Arts Oregon Transfer or the AAOT degree. Um, for this degree, you can focus on general studies if you want to, um, but choosing an area of emphasis sets you up better for transfer. So the area of emphasis, again, is um, the same as the Associate of Science. You can choose things like chemistry or business or history um, and choose that as your major and get ready to transfer to um, another Oregon for a year university. We also have some different uh, certificates and short term programs. Uh, some of the career technical certificates, which are between one and two years, um, for example, the industrial refrigeration certificate or the child and family studies certificate. Um, these are often embedded within a degree program. So you can get the certificate along the way to an associate's degree or you can start out with a certificate. And then if you'd like to continue on, after that, you can. You can continue on and get the two-year degree. So there's a lot of flexibility with those. Um, another option is the healthcare certificate uh, programs. So these require a special admission, which means that you complete a separate application um, from the general LBCC application. And the start dates for these programs vary throughout the year. So these are things like um, phlebotomy or surgical technology, mostly healthcare programs. We've also got some other healthcare programs um, that are called special admissions programs, and they again require a separate application from the general LBCC application, and they also usually have specific prerequisite requirements. Um, even to apply to the program. So those are um, classes that you need to take before you're able to apply. And these are programs like nursing or diagnostic imaging or medical assistant. So what classes should you take? Um, you might already know the answer to this because you've already met with the enrollment expert over the phone. Um, some general guidelines that we usually uh, keep in mind. Uh, you probably talked again about this with your enrollment expert. Um, so you've gotten that list of classes that they recommend. Um, you can also use your program map, uh, which is the sort of guideline uh, pathway for your major or your chosen program. Um, usually we recommend that new students take math and writing in their first term. That's because most programs require math and writing classes, so it's great to get started with those right away. We also recommend most uh, first term students to take our college success class, which is called destination graduation. So you may have uh, been recommended to sign up for that for this term. Um, and uh, the way to um, not take destination graduation would only be if you already had some uh, considerable number of transfer credits from another college. So most first term students take this class. Another thing to think about for um, deciding about classes in the future is that uh, you'll need to meet with your academic advisor. Um, that'll happen virtually th this term, so over the phone or maybe Zoom. Um, and do that early on in the term so you can um, talk about your goals and plan out your future terms here. Another thing that you'll want to consider moving forward is how many credits you want to take each term or uh, what your credit load is. So credits are a clue to you for how much time per week you'll be spending um, on the class. So each class typically is between one and 10 credits. Um, three or four credits is probably the most common. So as an example, a four credit class means um, you're spending four hours in the classroom. So this term that's uh, virtual or online classroom. And then you'll be spending eight hours doing homework each week. Um, so that could include studying or doing an assignment or um, getting some remote tutoring assistance. Um, so that's a total of 12 hours per week for one class that's worth four credits. So every time you pass a class, you earn those credits. And most two-year programs are about 90 credits to graduate. So as you're passing your classes, you're earning those credits and they're accumulating towards that um, 90 credit goal. 
So then your credit load is the number of credits that you take in a term. Um, if you are a full-time student, that means you're taking at least 12 credits, usually between 12 and 15. Um, this is really important for financial aid um, or if you are getting veterans benefits, so keep that in mind. That's typically about 36 to 45 hours per week of school, so class time plus homework and studying time, um, which is about the equivalent of a full-time job, so that's why we call it full-time. Um, you can also uh, take between 9 and 11 credits, which puts you at three-quarter time, or between six and eight credits, which puts you at half-time status. Six credits is the minimum if you want to be able to use financial aid, so just another thing to keep in mind. And thinking about credit load um, also helps you think about how you can manage your time uh, during college. So this here is a sample weekly schedule of a full-time student who also works and who also has a family. So the print is really small in here. Um, you don't necessarily need to be able to read it. I'll just explain what the different um, colors indicate. So in the sort of dark blue color, um, those are classes. So the student is taking 12 credits. Um, they're at a full-time class load or credit load. Um, the darker gray sort of bigger blocks of time there um, are work time. So the student works um, 29 hours per week. Um, so that's part-time work, um, but still quite a few hours. You can see that's five days a week. And the yellow blocks of time there are study time. So the student is spending 24 hours per week studying for their classes. Um, this time is going to vary depending on the class. So um, for some people, math class takes more time um, and maybe uh, psychology class takes a little bit less time. Um, it's going to vary, but that's kind of your general guideline. <clears throat> So that's a total of 65 hours per week um, spent on class, studying, and work. Plus, the student has a family. So the purple blocks of time there are family time that they've scheduled into their week. And then the little orange blocks of time on the weekdays there um, is lunch. So that's important too. Um, so you can see that with a full-time schedule and working and family, um, it really doesn't leave a lot of free time. Um, so something to think about uh, with your own situation. Um, you know, for some students, they don't have a lot of other things going on in life and doing a full-time class schedule is really doable. Um, but for other folks, um, especially if you're working full-time or you've got a family, um, you may consider um, being three-quarter time or part-time, half-time, um, if that's gonna be better for your own personal um, schedule and obligations. So for your first term, um, these are some goals that you can start to think about. Um, really just go to class <laughs> virtually. Um, you'll be doing class all online this term. So you're gonna get some um, experience with online learning. You're gonna get comfortable using different kinds of um, online learning platforms. Um, and hopefully you're gonna learn a lot in your classes and about how to be a successful online student. Another goal for this term, um, again, is to meet remotely with your advisor. So that could be a phone appointment or a Zoom appointment. Um, that'll be an opportunity for you to talk about your goals for future terms, um, talk about what classes to take in future terms, and above all, too, we want you to have fun. And this is college. We're learning. Um, we're all going to be learning a lot this term with the kind of unusual situation that we found ourselves in um, with everything going online and remote. So. We're all in this together. With online learning, there are some things that you'll want to keep in mind um, as the term gets started. Um, you will need daily access to a computer and not just your smartphone. Um, you'll also need reliable internet access. So if those things are um, going to be challenges for you, um, do reach out to us at the first resort. We know of some resources that might be helpful. Online learning also requires a really high level of self-direction and self-motivation. Um, there's no physical class to go to, so there's no person there who can remind you and keep you on track. Um, you'll be responsible for doing that for yourself, um, which means that you also need to have really good time management skills. You'll also be getting really comfortable, again, with online learning platforms such as Moodle. Um, Moodle is really commonly used by instructors at LBCC. 
you already have access to Moodle and there's a practice course available for you to um, explore and get comfortable with Moodle. So you can log into that um, through your single sign-on student portal and you can get comfortable using Moodle and seeing how the features work. You may also um, attend classes virtually with a uh, video meeting platform uh, like Zoom. So you might have to log in um, at a certain time to attend class virtually and participate virtually um, with your instructor and your classmates. And if you're having any technical issues um, trying to figure all this stuff out, you can always contact the student help desk. Um, they are our remote um, technical support. They're usually located in the library on campus, um, but since we are remote, they are also remote. So they're available um, during the day um, all term for any questions about Moodle or Zoom or your email or single sign on or computers or anything that you're having trouble with. So some super important tips for success. Um, you want to be getting into the habit of checking your LBCC email every day. Um, this is really important because this is the primary way that the college and staff at the college will communicate with you while we are remote. So this is how your instructors will communicate with you, um, your classmates even, um, any staff people, um, financial aid, admissions, your advisor. This is the place to um, make sure that you're checking every day and watching out for our communications. Um, you'll also want to regularly check the LBCC COVID-19 updates page. Um, this is where um, the college is updating any new information about the situation and how that's going to affect um, the college and classes and students um, throughout this term. So keep an eye on that. If you've got any questions about paying for classes at all, um, you can contact the financial aid office. They are also available remotely. Um, tuition is due on June 1st. This term, that's a little bit later than usual. Um, and there also will be no late fees assessed for spring 2020 term. So that's also unusual um, and something that the office is doing to um, kind of accommodate for the special situation we found ourselves in this term. A few more tips for success. Um, if you're looking for class accommodations, like if you had um, an IEP in high school or if you've got um, any kind of learning difference or disability, um, you can contact CIFAR, which is the Center for Accessibility Resources. Um, and they can talk with you about ways to be successful in your classes this term and in future terms. If you're looking for some help with your homework, uh, like math or writing or any other subject, we do have um, virtual academic support available in the Learning Center. So they typically have their physical location um, on campus, but they are now available remotely. So you can check out their webpage for how to contact them. And if you're not sure who to ask, again, you can contact us at the First Resort. Um, I'll show you our contact information again. Um, you can reach out to us anytime. We are open during spring break. We are open um, the week before classes start, um, so the week of March 30th. Um, you can find our information again on our web page, and you're also welcome to contact me anytime. So Thanks for being here with me today. It was really great to talk with you, to connect with you virtually um, through this orientation video. And I hope you'll reach out to us with any of your questions. And we are really looking forward to connecting with you this term um, and throughout future returns. So thanks again for being here. Good luck. <laughs>